Hello everybody, and welcome to another Daily Dose of Drupal. As always, I am Shane Thomas. You can follow me on Twitter at smthomas3. And also, go to codekarate.com if you haven't already, and please sign up for the newsletter over here on the left. You can also find me on Google+. Today, believe it or not, we are on episode number 100. It's a pretty, pretty big episode, obviously. It's been going on for quite a few months now, and it has been going great so far. And I guess the first thing I want to mention is starting on episode 101, the next episode, I will actually be launching some sponsorships. So if you're interested in a sponsorship or to sponsor an episode of the Daily Dose of Drupal, you can come to the Daily Dose of Drupal page, click on this link here, and read about more information on actually getting a sponsorship for an episode. We've already sold out the first 25 episodes, but still looking you know, for a few more. And I, just a quick mention on that, I'm only going to take sponsorships from companies or products or services that I feel like will actually help the Daily Dose of Drupal audience and that I believe in enough to personally endorse. So I'll never take any sponsorship that I don't think is going to help out you. So before we get started, I just want to say thanks for watching the Daily Dose of Drupal and thanks for making it as successful as it has been over the course of the last few months. And the reason that we do this or that I do this is that I believe that a learning person is an improving person and I understand that the learning process is definitely not easy, especially with Drupal. In fact, I've heard this before that it's, also, it's often said that Drupal's learning curve is more like a cliff than a curve and it can definitely be difficult to climb at times, especially when you're just getting started. And that's why Code Karate is here and that's why the Daily Dose of Drupal is here. So I want to do whatever I can do to help you climb that cliff and not only teach you Drupal, but try to help you become a better website developer. So today I'm actually going to open things up a little bit and tell you about the development environment that I have set up or that we've set up with my company, Beginner Media. Our website is beginr.com and we do a whole bunch of other, a whole bunch of Drupal related stuff primarily focused on e-commerce development, but we have a long history of Drupal website development, Drupal consulting work, and Drupal contracting work. Currently we are a four-person company, soon to be a five-person company, and we'll be completely redoing our website here in the next few months. That should be launching at least. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you how we deploy sites, how we have our development and live website environments and hopefully you'll be able to learn something, get some ideas for setting up your own development environment especially if you plan on launching more than just one Drupal site. So if you are going to be developing multiple Drupal sites you know, maybe you can find some ideas here that are actually going to be helpful. First a few notes. The setup is very simple for us and that's because we've done a lot of our work in the past as consultants and contractors so we don't necessarily have uh, a large amount of client sites that we host on our own. We have a, a good amount, but it's been growing a lot more lately, and so some of this is going to change going forward. We're always trying to improve and get it better, but this is where it's currently at. So let's go ahead and get started. We use a system called Agar, Azir, Eager. I've heard it pronounced a hundred different ways, but it's A-E-G-I-R. So we have our own, basically what this allows us to do and you can look it up and of course install it on your own servers it allows us to seamlessly deploy and create Drupal websites so we can have it deployed and created across multiple servers and multiple platforms and I'm gonna go over what some of this stuff means the first thing I'll do is I'm actually gonna just show you how easy it is to create a website simply come into create content site Just simply give it a domain name, select the installation profile and the platform, and I'll explain what all this stuff is that I want to install it on, as well as where the database should be hosted. If there's any other domain aliases, I can specify them here. Click Save, and that's it. I let it run. It's going to take a few minutes. 
it's going to create this site, it's going to send me an email, and I can log into the site, and I have a freshly installed Drupal 7 site. So as you can see, it literally takes 20 seconds to create a new Drupal website. The other thing that's nice about it is it has multiple server support. What this means is we can move websites across multiple servers. It uses what's called a hub and spoke mod model right now, which basically means that this main site here is the main hub and it has different spokes or different servers that it can push to. But all the code is centrally hosted on this main system and it's just pushed out to these other servers. That may change in the future, I've heard, but that's the way it's set up now and it works really well for us. We have four servers that we have set up. This first one is Xperi, which is just a staging server. It's only used for big sites that we need to have extra testing take place on. This Site Tracker and Templar are actually live production level servers that are hosted on Amazon Web Services. I've also used Linode in the past and was happy with them, but currently we're using Amazon Web Services for all of our production live websites that we host. And then the Supra server is where all the development happens. And as you can see, this site has now been created. I could get this email, I could log in and start doing work on this new Drupal website. And with this development site is where all of the major work takes place. But I'll first take a look at the platforms. Generally, we have a lot of platforms in here that aren't used. The main important ones are these ones right here. We have a development environment, a production environment, and then you can see another development environment for different versions of Drupal. As we upgrade the different versions, we just migrate the sites from one environment to a new environment. So for instance, if I come into Drupal 7.18 development, you can see that I have an old test site here. I can simply, cre if this was site was enabled, it's red because it's disabled now. I could of course delete it as well. But I simply run migrate, and I can migrate the site this one doesn't have any that are, can be migrated because it's of course disabled but I could migrate the site from 7. Drupal 7.18 to Drupal 7.19 it's going to migrate that site over and run any updates and upgrade it to the newest Drupal core version without me having to manually do anything so it's all point and click it's all easy and the reason we do this is to streamline the process and to make it easy for anyone in our company to be able to create new Drupal websites in a standard way and not have to worry about how things are getting created. The other thing to discuss is that everyone has the ability to SSH into the development server as this agger user. Uh, so some people can SSH in as their own account and then just change to this agger user. Some of us have the ability to just SSH directly in, but it's the same thing. Basically allows us to manage things using Drush, manage websites using Drush, and allows us to use Git and a couple other things depending on the circumstances. But as you can see it's a it's a pretty much a standard agar setup or eager I guess I'll always pronounce it agar but some people pronounce it differently as I mentioned before inside this platforms directory there's a list of all these different platforms that we have sites installed on so inside for instance this platform it's really just one Drupal installation that's a multi-site install as you can see this looks pretty standard Drupal there's an index.php there's modules, but what's important is inside the sites directory is all of these different sites that we have. And this corresponds with this here. So as you can see, it lists all the sites, and this is just, as it says, the publish path here is where I, I've actually SSH'd into, but I can actually change the directory into one of these test websites and I can run Drush commands, I can install additional modules, things like that. The other thing that's really cool about this platform using Agger is that you can actually 
install modules into the site's all modules directory or the site specific site directory. So any any module that's going to be shared across all these sites can be installed in the site's all modules directory. And then when I create a new version of a new platform, I can update the modules in the site's all directory. And as I migrate sites over from the old platform to the new platform, it's going to run any updates on any of those modules. So if there's a new Mo views module and every one of these sites has it. I'll put it in the sites all modules directory. I'll create a new platform when a new update comes out and I'll simply do a bulk migrate of all these sites to this new platform and it will automatically update the views module on all of these sites. So I don't have to go in individually and it helps especially when you have a large amount of sites that you need to push over to either new versions of modules or a new Drupal core version. The other thing about this is I have backup scripts that run every night and it actually just uses, I know a lot of people have their own, but my backup scripts actually just run and use the backup built right into uh, Agar. So it runs at this backup every night at midnight and it then of course then it takes those backups and it copies them over to a separate backup server located in a different location so that way we keep everything backed up daily so you're never gonna lose too much and one thing to mention is mo a lot of our small sites we don't actually use git on or version control on these sites because it's backed up every night and because it's all anytime you do anything any major tasks here it's backed up we actually only use git on larger sites and it, the way we use that is we actually use git on the entire platform so we'd create a platform for this specific site and we'd only have one site installed in that platform and we would use git on that entire drupal installation the entire drupal multi-site and we would then push that up to github is where we actually use anytime that we do use git on the bigger sites that we work on we use github to manage that as far as how we make changes to live sites because basically how this works is as soon as I develop this it's on the development server I simply migrate this out I can change the domain name I select our live server and I send it out to production which is on the live server I go ahead and hit migrate I let it run and it will of course get pushed out to the live site automatically it takes a little bit of time but then it will be live I didn't actually have to touch any server go to any command line do anything like that it all just works uh, if I want to make a change to that now I basically I make a clone and I pull it back to the development environment I make any changes you know a lot of times it's CSS code it's um, adding new views changing content types if you do any of that we export everything using the features module and after we export using the features module we copy that code changes over the top of the original site on the development platform and click this verify button which will then push those changes out to the live site once the changes are pushed out to the live site we'll clear the cache and run any features revert commands and you can do all of that from the development server so you can actually run a clear cache command and you don't actually have to log into the actual live site and it will actually be able to do that so that's basically how we handle all of our Drupal sites and our Drupal development we have four developers three of us use Ubuntu operating or Linux Ubuntu operating systems one uses a Mac we also have of course some Windows machines to use for testing I, I can boot up into Windows or Ubuntu I primarily use Chrome but I also heavily use Firefox I basically have both browsers open all day and anything that I do I pretty much test in both browsers and obviously this isn't a perfect system there's many things I would like to improve but it does work for us it's pretty good all around and it gives us the flexibility that 
not everyone on our team needs to be a system administrator or know a lot about how to manage a server or move migrate sites or run scripts on servers it's all done through a nice interface so we can spend our time focusing on developing the Drupal site and not necessarily managing it so that's it for today I I wanted to be as transparent as possible so if you have any questions please go to codekarate.com and find this post and leave some comments and I will try to answer whatever I can of course uh, as I mentioned before, if you're interested in sponsorships, come in here, click this sponsorship link, and go ahead and take a look at that. In the future, I plan on doing some stuff on panels, display suite, responsive Drupal sites, Drupal commerce, organic groups, and a whole bunch of other interesting modules that you may have never heard of. I also have a new Code Karate theme that's going to be developed here shortly. It's just a matter of getting the time. I don't know when it's going to be happening it could be two months away it could be six months but it is the wheels are starting to turn on that it's just a matter of getting the time to finish that up and if you know of any other topics you want me to cover on the daily dose of Drupal please let me know you know how to contact me either on Twitter or using the contact form I try to respond to every email I, I honestly I don't get to them all but I try and if you're waiting on an email from me I will hopefully have some time to get to it and you'll get a response back Thanks for watching the Daily Dose of Drupal, and thanks for making this happen. And I will see you next time.